Can you hear me? Well, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation in this event. It's a pleasure for me to can can contribute just in brief with my with my little knowledge about this this topic. I'm Professor Rui Alexandre Castanho. I'm affiliated with the Lubeski University in, in Poland, also affiliated with the University of Johannesburg in South Africa. And I'll talk here today a little bit about how the sustainable development, the sustainable regional development, and also the peripheral and the peripheral territories, like is the European borderlands and the resulting cross-border cooperation can give us some, or can provide us some guidelines for us to try to achieve the sustainable development that we are looking to, to achieve so badly in the last few, few years. Therefore, I want you to, to talk a little bit in brief, which is our starting point. In fact, our starting point was this research starts because we have assisted and we've seen that in the, the last couple of years, one third of the population of, of for example, New or Europe lives in the, the, border, the border areas. And in these areas, in these borderlands, they are the most affected by the, the policies made by the central, the central government. And this, uh, this kind of, of population, these territories, have several specificities that could be really interesting when we try to achieve sustainable development uh, methods because these are really challenging territories. And if we try to understand these ones, perhaps we can get the guidelines to also to apply or to extrapolate to another territories with similar issues. And perhaps it will be much easier for us when we try to work on it if you have already a previous knowledge about these territories. And in these borderlands, we have uh, a really, really interesting kind of cooperation that is called the cross-border cooperation. And nowadays, this cross-border cooperation achieves a relevance that has never achieved in history. It's, in fact, it allows a really territorial integration and also enables the creation of infrastructures and common planning projects in the European territories. In fact, as I told you uh, previously, this issue gains even more, more relevance when we know that one third of, of this European population lives in these border areas. But we had the tendency that to see, or to, to seeing that the border is, is something that will come to an end, and that is not, not something that we should grow even more. And in my opinion, and in our team opinion, the border is a place where we, we have to grow and not a place where we have come to an end. So we can get even more strong and we can get even more powerful with the border cooperation. So this basically was the starting point and why we start to work on this territory because we believe that we can give our contribute in a, a very interesting way if we focus on these specific, specific uh, transition areas. So why the relevance? If we think about the pivotal role of strategy in common planning, for example, in the supporting of development of the, the human activities, uh, this is the requirement to be an operational tool that will enable us to continue to support the growth and development as a process of the societies. And, and by the same time, it makes it possible for this development process to take place within principles and, and the goals, for example, that are so essential to not jeopardize the, the future of the, our, our generations. So in fact, this sustainable planning gains uh, even more emphasis in these border areas, okay? Due to the fragility they, they present, for example, with the lack of resources, with the, the, the far away they are from the, from the centers, but we have found also similar, similar conditions in the ultra peripheral territories. Like for example, right now I'm in the Azores Islands because I'm, I'm extrapolating these principles from the borderlands and we are in this archipelago studying and trying to implement this, this concept that from the borderlands that we call it peripheral territories. And in these uh, insular territories, in these islands, we call it ultra peripheral territories. And we have a project that we have worked in the Macaronese region that is composed by Azores, Madeira, Canary Islands and Cap Verde, and we are trying to implement this concept that I'll show you about the peripheral uh, lands, about the borderlands, and we're trying to implement it in the regional sustainable development of these ultra peripheral regions. So, in fact, this is even more relevant when we talk about regional development in these peripheral and ultra peripheral regions. So, if we move a little bit for, uh, forward, this is so 
so relevant because if you look from a planning and development strategy or, or a concept, uh, this kind of sustainability, or sustainability development of course or concept is impossible for us to disconnect from uh, our thoughts and from our our, our endeavors that we are working nowadays because this is the development that meets the needs of the, the present generation without jeopardizing the, the capacity of the future generation to meet their own needs. For example, I, we can, me, you and all, 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 the, all of us in this, this time, even if it's not the same that was, uh, for example, yesterday, but we still have the power to plan our own territories and we cannot take out this, this capacity from the future generations, for example, to my, my daughter, to my, to my grandsons, for example, in the future, do they plan their own territories as the way that we have planning our, our own territories. So we should plan in a way that this uh, capability will not take, take, take off from, from this generation. That's why we try to endeavor and, and focus so much in the sustainable development and the sustainable concepts. So, if we just look in brief to the sustainability uh, concept, we know that this is only uh, capable to, to achieve when you fall or when you get the three uh, fundamental pillars, social, economic, and environmental. And when the three of, of them meeting, we can say that we have a so-called uh, so sustainable and so desired sustainable development. So many times you found projects that they say that are sustainable, because they focus a lot on the, the social, economic, and also they have environmental. But if they are not equitable, the three, the three uh, pillars, if they are not the, the same weight within this project, uh, they, they are not sustainable, sustainable projects, for example, sustainable, sustainable, sustainable uh, process, because the weight should be the, almost the same, okay, between the three pillars. So it not needs only to have the three, but they also have the same, the same weight within this project. So, once we are talking about sustainable planning and sustainable strategies, I believe that we should focus just in brief, just as a brief overview about how a planning strategy should be based on, okay? So, if we are following a sustainable planning model, this strategy should be based on territorial management, for example, to find a tool that should be able to identify uh, regions and areas that present critical values, for example, the system for the environmental protection, as well as for the promotion, for example, agriculture in urban territories because they are so scarce nowadays, among many other ecological values, for example, but not only. Also, we should articulate okay, the development of strategies that foster the innovation, of the urban requalification, the housing, the mobility, the job creation, and not only uh, any job creation, but a qualified one, and also to promote the transition and have nowadays for the digitalization that is really relevant for, for uh, today's society. Also, we should avoid in this kind of planning strategy, the most extremes. For example, by one hand, we try to cover all the factors that break, for example, the region evolution or the city evolution. And uh, because you cannot cover them all, okay? We have many, many issues, many, many problems when we have, for example, this kind of, of planning, we have many issues into the, the city planning or the regional planning. And you cannot cover them all with our strategy. But at the same time, we should avoid to focus only on one goal. So the point is that we try to cover with our strategy the most factors that we can or the most, the most problems or issues that we can cover with our strategy, but with, without focus only in one of that, uh, of that issues. And that's why. That's because for, for us, not only to cover that's only one, but when you try to cover more than one, we try to cover them equally and not some of them stay, stay almost untouched. So we try to cover all the, the factors, okay? But not them all because it was impossible, but at the same time, the strategy should not cover only one, okay? So try to cover the most that you can with your strategy, but uh, in a way that you still can give an uh, appropriate answer with this strategy to this issue that you focus. Also, we should emphasize what really matters and what really matters. What really matters, for example, this kind of project and planning or these sustainable planning uh, ideas, 
this is uh, what really matters is what the community only gives value for example what they knew well if the people do not are feeling they are into the project they not know want to know about it for example they only care about what they really know well for example you need to bring the population for your project so the public participation is really critical for for uh, planners for the decision maker that are trying to endeavor and try to to create this kind of sustainable planning so the public participation put the, the all in the same boat feel the population that they care about the project is really relevant i can give you some examples i'm also a landscape architect and when we do some kind of projects in this area for example urban parks or something like this requalification of urban parks into into uh, the city the city areas so if the people the population do not feel into that project okay in the, the previous uh, phases of the project when the project is done the population do not feel so much that this project is also from them because their ideas were not heard okay so you need to bring this public, the public participation to you when you are doing the project you need to hear them for them to feel to feel they want to to uh, they want to give their ideas and they want to reshape this this project with the, their their own ideas okay we need to obviously we need to filter these kind of ideas with the technician but not only this project should be focused on the technician but also on the public participation and this is just an example from landscape architecture but you can use this kind of project to all of the discipline when you do about this sustainable planning is critical is really critical believe me you need to bring the population with you if not if you not have the population agreement and do not the population not fill the project your project will be a failure so and also you need to understand that only through the combination of efforts it is possible to build something so cooperation instead uh, competition so we need to co cooperate okay instead of, com of do competition and you see a lot in small territories for example when you have uh, small and not and sometimes not so small territories when you have like the election and this this uh, council president try to do something uh, better than the another one when they have the same region and the, and in the end they lose the, the for example investments and they duplicate infrastructures and, and they lose everything so why because they want to compete instead of they, they cooperate so this is kind of basically that you learn from this borderlands we need to cooperate from these cross-border cooperation processes instead of the competition so after I give you these these brief concepts you need to also to know that the so desired sustainability seeks for a sustainable set that can be understood as a process of optimization of uh, of uh, uh, getting better this this complex system instead of uh, of uh, of you go go back so the ideas go from sometimes with less but the point is also that it seems really really simple concepts but the point is also that this is really simple yes indeed it is simple but it's not so easy to implement because there are many many uh, interests within all of this process of sustainable planning so it's not so easy for 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 us to try to implement this even if the principles are simple but it's not so easy because there are many many interests in the regional planning in the urban planning so it is really really tough and really challenging when us trying to implement this kind of concepts also by the other hand after just give you this overview about the sustainable sustainable planning uh, strategy we need also to have in mind that this strategy for the next decade and from the, the next the next couple of years we should focus on the 17 sdgs i'll give you just a second for you to take a look so these 17 uh, sdgs these are uh, put forward by the 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 un it says the sustainable development goals and our project obviously is what we have been talking so for example we cannot cover all these 17 sustainable development goals when you are trying to create this strategy of sustainable planning but we should try to avoid for example to cover in only one so once again we try need to try to focus in the most of this sustainable development goal that we can without losing obviously the focus uh, on our uh, main main goal so once again we should be in mind when trying to create this kind of sustainable planning strategy these sustainable development goals because in the next decades this is kind of the is like the the most important uh, document that we should follow of, of these objectives if you want to prosper and if you want to go forward all of us together 
in this kind of development. So this is really, really important if you try to, to focus these, these goals, but obviously from this kind of sustainable planning strategy. And now trying to focus just a little bit more emphasizing the cross-border cooperation from a perspective from the cross-border cooperation, CBC, okay, and the common plan. So the CBC, this cross-border cooperation aims to, to promote the win-win situations, okay, to create a, a bigger territorial cohesion, is a process, a, a procedure carried out all over the world, not only in Europe. Obviously, in Europe, it's more relevant because you have more borderlands, okay, but it's not only from Europe, it's all over the world. Also, for example, in Brazil, you have this kind of cross-border cooperation processes with, with Argentina, with the neighbor uh, countries you do have. And this is a process that we can extrapolate and use to all over the world. And if you focus in Europe, that is the art that we have studied, one of the most relevant milestones within many others is the Master Treaty that's establishing, among many others, once again, the EU, the European Union. And this kind of CBC, this cross-border cooperation, uh, try to foster establishment of global network of relation between people, okay, and companies, and but try to, to foster really and, and create a really strong uh, network about people and, and relations. But it's not only a, a rainbow, not, not, it's not only a rainbow, it has, has also many, many problems about it, or many, many challenges. For example, we have the border redefining, okay, in European territories have still, let's call it wars because it is what it is uh, between Crimea and Ukraine, in Ukraine uh, with Ukraine and Russia, for example, in the last few years. We have the issue about the immigration fluxes from, from Africa, the, the war refugees that's dangerously increasing the sense of, of belonging of the populations. We have uh, also terrorism phenomena that's increasing in the, EU, in the European Union territories. We made that radical nationalist fraction, for example, uh, will raise doubts about the free movement for the European spaces. Okay, this is, is kind of a catalyst for the for this kind of movements. We have the the so recent Brexit. We have the COVID nineteen situation, the pandemic here uh, all over the world, and also in Europe, we have many many challenges about it. For example, we not even can can create a combination about how the vaccine will be handled and. Uh, among several other issues from the COVID-19 pandemic that shows all our fragilities as the European Union, but et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we have many, many other issues that we need to deal and we need to face in this cross-border cooperation. However, if many, many obstacles happen or, or exist, we still need to, to have the idea that the, the idea and the base of this cross-border cooperation is really, really interesting. Also, we need to consider that as all the processes, they need to be improved and some, some issues need to be uh, differently treated, okay? But the point of the, the core of this idea is really interesting and if the cross-border cooperation, if is well planned and well designed, is really, really interesting. However, as I show you, there is many, many, uh, many, many obstacles regarding this, this process. However, we have also really interesting outcomes from this cross-border cooperation. For example, just, just as an example, we have the, the, I have the, the Schengen area, for example, this is a really good achievement of this cross-border cooperation because this is a result of the cross-border cooperation processes. For example, we have uh, a Europe without internal borders represents obviously a great uh, profit for the economy, which uh, is, is showing the relevance of this Schengen ideal. The ideal as well as the relevance for our uh, everyday lives in our society. So this kind of, of achievements that we uh, achieve through this cross-border cooperation, we need to preserve it and strengthen this common good. And the idea is to see these examples and try to create more examples like these, the, like functional things. Sometimes, as we know, this is like a, a tentative and follow. Sometimes we try to create something good, but we not can do it. So we need to go back and try to do it, design it in, in a different way. So because the next one will try to get it better, okay? So it's kind of a tentative uh, of error and process like, like in, every, in every process. But we also have really, really interesting pro projects that are resulting from this cross-border cooperation. As for example, I can name some. 
this is all resulting from the combination of effort and not from the, 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 the competition, okay? We have the ISPON, that is a European Spatial Planning Observatory Network, okay? That is really helpful for us when you're trying to create some studies, some researches about what happened in these European territories. That's also within this, this kind of project is we have the OECs that use the results of applied research from ESPON as a criteria for the CBC development planning. We have also projects uh, about uh, specific regions in the, the Iberian Peninsula, like the Otalic Sea project that I was involved like for five or six years. This is a territorial observatory of uh, three regions in the Iberian Peninsula, two, of, two from Portugal and one from Spain. We have Alentejo from Portugal, Centro from Portugal and Extremadura from Spain. But this is just an example. We have thousands of these kind of projects all over the, the, the Europe. But this is our, all, all of this is resulting from cross-border cooperation. And when we try to create this kind of a project, we need to give reports. And with these reports, we have real, real interesting uh, results sometimes that we can go forward in these specific fields. Okay, that's, that's the, one of the, the points that is so relevant. We have this kind of cross-border cooperation in Europe. For sure, it also exists because I, I'm aware of the situation in Brazil because also collaborate with, the, with Unicamp, with Aquageo from Campinas, with the group, a research group. I know that it's also many, many projects in, in the, the, the South America, but here we have this kind of project and this is happening with the, a very rapidly way, this kind of project that, that are really interesting when they are really well conducted and directed. So this is kind of something interesting for the, our sustainable planning and for our concepts. Well, now, just trying to focus a little bit about which are our empirical research and just put like this brief theoretical part that I, I show in, in, in all this, this small time about sustainable planning and I'll try to show you what is our research about and how we did our research that enable us to identify some critical factors that could be really relevant for the territorial planning and sustainable development in these, in these peripheral territories and ultra peripheral territories. Well, our process is focused on case studies of, uh, around all Europe. This was conducted in 2015, I guess, and we have 20 case studies, as you can see in the, in the picture, in the, in the map. And these 20, 20 case studies, they have obviously cross border cooperations. Uh, uh, scenarios. For example, they have at least two cities in each one of them. So at least we have studied 40 cities, okay, in these 20 case studies from the south of Europe, from Portugal, Spain, to, uh, to Russia. And what we have developed, I'll just give you a second for you to, to appreciate our, our area of, uh, of study and the, the case studies we have selected. And between 2014, 2015, until 2017, 16, 17, I was in all of them, okay, giving, uh, take, taking data, conducting interviews, uh, talking with the decision makers, politis, politicians, uh, the, the public in general, so the main, the, the main entrepreneurs from this area, so it was a real, really big research that we have conducted all over the Europe. And it was a lot of travels, obviously, in, the, in all the, this period. To, to all Europe, but it, it was a funny time and, and gave us real interesting, uh, real interesting uh, outcome that I'll show you. But for to select this, these 20 case studies that I'll show you once again, these 20 case studies were not selected like uh, just why we just pick 20 and say, okay, this 20, no, they have a really tight uh, selection criteria. So for us to select these 20 case studies, they have for example, these cities must have done previous work on cross-border cooperation. The cross-border cooperation should, should have demonstrated for so on the integration of environmental, social, cultural, and economic development goals. So to be in line with what we have been taught previously about this topic. The cities should have a relationship with multiple stakeholders as they've been organized in a group, association, create to develop the strength of various aspects in range to CBC. So it doesn't matter how the way they are, uh, they are uh, 
organize the stakeholder, but they should strengthen this kind of aspects to the, 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 the cooperation between the both countries. So the distance between the cities could not be greater than 60 kilometers. For example, from city center to city center, it could not be longer than 60 kilometers. Okay? If not, we stay away, stay out of our, our selection criteria. And at least one of the cities should be a medium-sized city. When you say medium-sized city, we are talking about cities that we have defined by that time, that the city to be medium should be like 50,000 to 40,000 million inhabitants per, per, per the area. So this is a little bit discussable, but, but the point is that we have choose this, this medium-sized city because in Europe, the reality in, all, in, in most of these borderlands, the reality is a little bit different that, for example, in other regions of the world. So the cities to be a medium-sized city is not the same that could be in another place. That's why we choose that medium-sized city that for, for you, perhaps it will be like a really small city, but for us, we have entitled them a medium-sized city. So at least one of the cities should have a bigger dimension than the another one. So therefore, our process, uh, even is uh, many, many case studies, many things, I guess the process, as, uh, as in the same line as the sustainable development idea, the process is easy. So our process, I guess it's easy. We have collected, obviously, probably have collected all this data and the selection criteria, okay? We have seen what the previous authors have done about the topic, which is the state of the art, okay? To see which are the, gap, the gaps that we can fill with our research, okay? And therefore, we select this criteria. Up to select our, our criteria and define the hypothesis of research that, we, that has been, which are the critical factors for the common territorial success, we have defined these case studies, okay? After this, we have the case study analysis, and after this case study analysis, you could, we conducted these questionnaires from top to bottom. For example, from the mayors of the council until the, the main actors, the technicians, to the entrepreneurs in this area, to until the person that's just random people that I found in the parks, in the cities, and I ask you the same, the same question that I made to the, the top of the, the leaders of this city, and I ask the, 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 the population what they think about this kind of, uh, of cooperation, if it goes, goes in the right way or not. So after that, it enables it enable us to identify several critical factors for the territorial success. And this, these critical factors are 14, okay? We have identified 14 critical factors that in the time this has really, really well, well received by the European Parliament and also by, by the thematic journals that I can give you the link where you can see these this studies published. It was published in the, the top of the journals of the, the planning, for example, Habitat International, Sustainable Citizen Society, and many others. We have more than 10,000 publications by now about this topic and about this factor that we have uh, uh, discovered, not discovered, but we have uh, connected with this uh, planning and this, source, this success for these borderlands. So, we have the connectivity, the movement between the cities. We have the strength, the territorial strategy. We have the avoid duplication of infrastructures. We have the increase of sense of belonging, try to diverse the infrastructure offer, for example, the oral citizenship. We have the assist to the, the access to European funds, the stronger economy, the increase of life quality standards to create magnets for young and talented people, the master plans and common goals, the strong political commitment, the public participation, the political and transparency, the commitment and transparency that is different, that's the strong political commitment, and I'll show you then why. We have the city marketing and advertisement, and all these factors have been described in this paper that I have in the, the top of the, the, this page, that is available for download in Habitat International. And now I'll try to, just in brief, to talk a little bit about each one of these factors, okay? That's, that is the core of my intervention today. That's why I want for you to have an idea how you can use these kind of factors in these uh, so specific peripheral uh, territories and multi peripheral territories if you're gonna work on it. But not only this territory, but perhaps also in sustainable development in general, because in our opinion, many of these factors are really, really present in almost uh, every single project that we are working on. So we also can try to do something interesting that we have done is try to divide these critical factors that we have identified into teams. 
So for example, we have like the, P, the P5 that you can see in the top, like, like for example, diverse infrastructure to offer and the P8, for example, increase the life, life quality standards, okay? So these kind of factors could be like, let's say, social cultural team, okay? And they also have another team that uh, is the research sustainability. For example, the connectivity and the movement between cities and also the, to avoid duplication of infrastructures, we can group them into this research sustainability topic, okay? Also the same happened with some of the topic uh, just uh, specific from financial economic, okay? That will be, for example, the strong economy, or for example, the, the assessed European funds, but also we have a following topic that will be the political strategic, that we cover like five factors within this topic. So when you group them by, by, by teams, it is easier for us to try to see how they can be grouped, okay? And how we can analyze it. And if, if you see that we are working or not, and in a way that we try to cover, obviously, once again, this is sustainable planning. Not all of them, because as, as we know, it is uh, impossible to cover all of them, but to try to cover the most that we can, like a good strategy of sustainable planning. So in this regard, we have grouped them into topics or, or, uh, or, or teams that we group them for be easier for us to work on. And starting from, from the first one that I'm not showing you to them all because they are 14 and we have not, not signed to them all, but for example, when you talk about the critical factors and the, the connectivity the movement between cities, this is really critical. And you see that connectivity between cities refers the network of the existing transportation infrastructures between the cities. For example, the relevance that this may have on the success of the territories is evident, okay? So this factor also takes into consideration uh, the ease or not, that is if it's easier or not for you to move uh, between the city centers or the city centers. For example, in the, the study, the case study we have studied, in, in the, we have analyzed it in, in Europe, uh, we have really good examples of this, of this mobility. For example, between the city of Vienna and Bratislava, they have a really good connection line of, uh, of trains, okay, and buses that uh, cover really well this, this territory, okay, because the, many of the, the Slovakian people from Bratislava goes work to, to Austria, to Vienna, and they can move within an hour from city to city. So they can go to work to, to Vienna and go to back to sleep to, to Bratislava, easy. The same happened with Copenhagen Malmo. For example, even they are uh, apart with the Orson Sea of the, or, the Orson, uh, the Orson uh, uh, the Orson natural uh, obstacle that we have in there, for example, we can, uh, we have a real, really good uh, way that they can go from one side to another with the Orson Bridge. I'm not sure if you know this or not, but I can show you in brief. The first, the first image is uh, Vienna Bratislava, the really good connection they have with trains and the, all of the time that you can move between these two cities. And the second one is a really known bridge in the Strait of Orson between Copenhagen, Denmark, and Malmo, Sweden, okay, that the people can move really, really uh, easily. And the point is, this bridge is very, very uh, known because uh, uh, half of the bridge is uh, underwater and the, the half of the, and the, the rest of the, the bridge is a, a normal bridge, but the rest is a travesty uh, underwater. So this is quite, quite interesting. And with this um, megaloman project that they did here, they have uh, win a lot with this situation because the people can go from Denmark, for, for example, from the, the Malmo population can go to, to Copenhagen and Copenhagen people, can, the, the Danish people can go to Sweden really easy, like in 40 minutes with this, with this bridge. So it's really interesting, they connect, they, they have at the beginning a really big obstacle. This is like this natural barrier, as I told you, this Orson uh, uh, Sea or the Orson uh, uh, Strait, and they are uh, really easy to move between one side and another. And this investment was really big in the beginning, but uh, regarding all the mobility that allows the, this was paid, paid itself in, in a really uh, short, short period of time. So we also have, for example, the strength, the territorial strategy. And in some cases, the existence of this privileged uh, geographic location, that's, as we know, some of the cities are, or the territories are, are, have more, let's say, more lucky or, or something like this when they are located, okay, to strengthen their rational strategy. 
and this is pivotal for the cross-border cooperation to, to, to obviously to, to reach this desired success. But sometimes it's not happen like this. I can give an example. For example, you see that the, the case of Copenhagen Malmo, okay? Copenhagen is the capital of Denmark and Malmo is not the, the capital of Sweden. And also Malmo is really far away from Stockholm, that is the capital. So the point is, from Malmo to, to Copenhagen, they can go really in a short period of time with this infrastructure that we have seen. But the point is, Malmo uh, is bad, bad located within this territory because it's not the capital city. They are far away from the capital city, but they took away from the best advantage they could because with the Orson Bridge, they can connect with the really uh, uh, capital center from not from their country, but from the, the neighbor country with cross border cooperation. They, co they connect really, really close with Malmo, with the, sorry, with, the, with Copenhagen. And this, they, at the beginning, did not have this privileged geographical location, but they can do some, some strategy, they can overcome this obstacle, and now they are one of the more successful cases in this kind of cooperation, okay? And also, we have other factors, for example, to avoid infrastructure duplication. So this factor refer, refers to the non-duplication of uh, investment in nearby areas. So, for example, so that the public capital for development for these territories through the, the border cooperation projects will be used in a more efficient way that will enable us, in the, once again, if you bear in mind this sustainable planning strategy, to respond to other priorities and to other problems that the territories may present. So, once again, if we cooperate and we create this kind of synergy, it will be much easier for us and it will be more, more smart uh, if we can do this kind of, uh, of, uh, of, of investments. There is a really interesting example in Europe that is, I'm not sure if you are uh, aware or not, but is the aer airport, okay, that is located in Basel, St. Louis and give answer to three big uh, regions or big cities. So they give answer to the Basel, St. Louis and also to Kell. So it gives basically answer to three regions from different countries, to France, uh, France, uh, Germany, and I guess Switzerland. So this is this interesting project. So this, the, the usual is some of the region, each one of them do an airport, but no, they have been more smart than the usual. So they connect the funds and they do an airport in the more strategic location and with only one investment uh, uh, shared among these three countries, they built one airport that can give answer to them all. So it's much more smart from their side and they can use the funds the, for another the investment, for another issue, more priority that to create, for example, three different airports. So this is what's really interesting uh, planning for this kind of, of project that we have assisted here in, uh, in this aero airport located in, in, in Bay St. Louis. And also, we have other factors like to increase the sense of belonging. For example, to promote the sense of belonging is uh, critical for this uh, regional success. Why? Because uh, several European populations uh, had a strong historical common past and have been divided by, by administrative borders in modern maps. So, uh, we have in Europe, we have many dialects in both sides of the, of the, the border, okay? We have cultural specificities among uh, many others. But this factor is kind of tricky. For example, you need to know how to manage it because sometimes the population needs to have the increase of this sense of belonging, okay? For us to try to obtain more benefits and more, and more valuation about our own resource, okay? Our endogenous resources because sometimes we have a really decreased sense of belonging and we need to put in the population this increase the sense of belonging in a, a, a different uh, standard. For us to try to value our endogenous value, uh, endogenous resources, and try to, to create a brand over it. And so we try to create our own specificities and we try to, to value our, our, our resources. But sometimes that one happens in, for example, in uh, Bayonne San Sebastian, or we can have also the, the situation in some other region in the Central Europe with Poland and, and Czech Republic. You also have the more, the more uh, perhaps the more mediatic scenario is with Catalonia. And what, what happened here? It's happened that we have a really increasing the sense of belonging because when this factor is really increased, we can 
go to dangerous places. For example, this kind of uh, of uh, of uh, radical fraction in the Catalonia, for example, or in Bayonne Saint Sebastian that you have the, the Basque Country also, or you can have in another areas on the South Poland with Czech Republic. So this factor need to be really uh, well managed because uh, if not, they could be. Uh, let's say it could go to the not so expected uh, fields and, and in fact dangerous uh, areas. So we also have something interesting in the, the European Union when you try to create a diverse of infrastructure offer that we call it the aerocision chip. For example, this factor is related with the non-duplication of equipment. For example, the population of both territories have aerocision chip car. What it means? This allows you, for example, uh, let's say about Portugal and Spain. If you are in a Portuguese city, but you are uh, in a border with Spain, and we are really close to the other city, the both the Portuguese person and the Spanish person have that Eurocitizenship card that is different from the ID and from the national card, but is only specific for the residents of that region, and they allow us to benefit from the same advantages in the, the other side of the border. For example, when the Portuguese go to the the pools in, in let's say the public the public pools in Spain they can benefit from the discount of the, the Spanish citizens if they, they exist. For example, when a Spanish uh, citizen go to the Portuguese side and go to the movies, they can benefit from the same discount rates, okay, that the, the Portuguese citizen. So this happens already in, in Portuguese uh, Spanish uh, cities, like in Chaves Vri in the north of Portugal, or to Valencia also in the north. This is kind of interesting because this promotes the, the really co collaboration and the movement and a more strong territorial cohesion between all this, uh, this border and it shows that the border is no longer something that ends but also something that you can grow even more. So it's quite interesting when you can do these kind of strategies for, to, to create a more, a more greater cohesion about these territorial areas. So, and this factor, I guess, it's is quite uh, uh, obviously. Ob uh, we, if you can access European funds with more easily, it's more easily for us to overcome uh, some uh, some problems that we have in our regions, and it's easily for us to achieve the success. However, this is not so easy as it seems to be, because uh, through the European funds, obviously, it's, it's possible to address a wider range of fundamental issues for the development, but. Uh, the point is, for example, the European Union, even if they have different policies from different areas, the quantity of amount of, of funds they, they, they give to different territories with different needs is not uh, well balanced. So we believe that some territory needs much more uh, funding to overcome some problems and to try to achieve the same level at, at, at least some similar level that the another the another territories if they want to prosper and they, if they want to success on this territory and this when I was when I was on the on the field conducting research and conducting questionnaires with all this population uh, it was some case uh, some specific case studies in Romania in uh, Hungary in uh, in the, the east the east part of Europe that the many men in the Balkans it, many many population feel that, uh, for example, these European funds are not equally distributed and they are not uh, enough for them to, to overcome the, the, uh, the amount of, of difficulties. Because we know that they have passed for different things. That, for example, there was a recent war like 20 years ago in the, in the Balkans. So it was, so not have the same, the same, the same uh, issues in all the territories in Europe, okay? So even if the funding, okay, it's different, the funding they receive from for example, from Central Europe or from the South Europe or from the North Europe, uh, still not have enough for they overcome some of the issues and is real difficult and challenging for do with so many issues uh, with that funding. That's why we want to emphasize a little bit this, this factor. So another interesting factor that I, I believe that is important for us when we uh, talk about this sustainable uh, planning strategy is to create some magnet for young and talented people. What it means? It means that our regions, sometimes we even, for example, our country invests a lot to create, let's say, doctors, okay? I have a really good case. It happened a little bit to all over the world, but I have the case from Poland, uh, from Poland and Germany. Poland invests a lot to create doctors, okay? Invests a lot to the, the, the country, 
gives a lot of funding and the, the, the taxpayers a lot of funding to, to, to invert on these, on these uh, doctors' careers to, to, to form them. And when they are, uh, they have the, they finishing their, their foreign day, what, what happened? They're not saying Poland. They go to German because why? Because German pays much better salaries and they always, uh, you, one country just invert on uh, always on this this person to to get the information, and then they go out. And the problem is not the the person that go out. The problem is the territory does not create, or the regions do not create. For example, some magnet, some some interesting uh, interesting points for you to to stay in your region. So that's why this is just an example. This happened with all the the fields. So the region needs to create some uh, magnets so to attract young entrepreneurs to the region. Okay. To do not let them flee, okay, to the other economies and the other countries. This is not uh, competition, but this is also cooperation. For example, let's say, or to create in this in this case some exchange of professionals. If let's say the case of if Poland needs some of another areas, they, perhaps they can change different uh, areas. But the point is, in the end, we need to create some uh, magnet for us to try to retain some of these young and uh, talented people in our region if you want to have a sustainable basis for this development and also prosperity uh, in these borderland areas. I believe this happens also in the region of, of Brazil, obviously, and it, this is all over the world. But the point is, when it happens, we need to, to see which are our major issues and which are our major uh, necessities about, for example, formation and about uh, our companies and about what we need to create in these in these areas, which are the clusters that we need to, to invert on to, to get these these magnets uh, to be successful for these young and talented people, for example. This is just just an example. We also have something obviously totally uh, pivotal for this for this uh, territorial success in borderlands that is create master plans and common objectives together. For example, development common master plan between the cities of different territories is critical to get the, the common goals and overcome some common uh, problems. For example, throughout these tools, the cities can respond, can give answer to a wide range of issues where the both municipalities will be winning by the strengthening of the, the cross-border cooperation uh, processes. It happens in your airport, as we've seen, but for example, it also happened in Vienna, Bratislava, when the, the both cities, even they have like the city planning for the master plan for Vienna and the master plan for Bratislava, they also have a different master plan when the both te technicians from the both sides of the board join at, that calls the, the master plan about Vienna, Bratislava master plan. So they plan together. This is really, really, really uh, critical when if you want to have success in this kind of, uh, of projects. And also, we have the political commitment. That is, the, the politician says one thing before they are elected, and they do another one. Okay, but you also have plus that that commitment. We also have the transparency. For example, they say one thing, and also before election, and after they do that thing to get, for example, the funding. Okay, but after we get the funding, we lost the track of the funding. So we need to know where our our uh, funding because this. Um, this funding is from all of us in the case of the European Union. And where is this funding to do this project? What happened with them? So we need to not only this political commitment, okay, to say committed with the points and with the, the main issue that we need to focus on, but also about the transparency. Where is the money? We need to track the money. This is some should be much more uh, uh, easily for, for the, the mortals, let's say, to understand what happened with the, the big amounts of, of, of money that, that comes to the territories and they only do like one or two uh, things and the rest of the money just disappear. So this is quite uh, really relevant for us to try to, to figure out if we try to overcome and also to, to stop with some of the, this untransparency and this, this situation is really recurrent in Europe, happens a lot. In some cases that I was studying on, it was, for example, Monaco, Monaco, Nice. The population uh, complains a lot about this uh, lack of transparency, but also Monaco is considered sometimes a tax haven. And also, I have another case study that is between Gibraltar and La Línea de la Concepción in Spain. The same issue happens. The population say this is impossible for us to have success in this cross-border cooperation because uh, we not know 
where the funding is because Gibraltar do not give uh, anything for us about the, the funding and uh, Gibraltar says the same thing. So it's something really difficult if this transparency and this commitment do uh, not, not occur. So I guess this uh, factor is obviously really relevant for us to try to achieve this uh, sustainable development and this uh, sustainability processes. And as we start to, to, to talk about this public participation and about to bring the population to your project, I believe that this is critical, obviously. So it not needs to be a landscape architecture project, but could be any project, like for example, a cross-border cooperation project. But if the citizen's involvement there is not, not uh, happening, this project is almost a failure from, from the beginning because the population needs to feel, as I told you, involved into the project and the population needs to, to feel that their needs are listening, okay, they are being heard, and they have been implemented, their complaints and their, their worrying that are into this project. So it happens uh, a lot in these territories when they only do this project close into uh, some, uh, some rooms with only technicians and uh, experts of it. They, they invite like a professor from sustainable development. Sometimes it happens that they invite me, then we have also a professor, um, a technician from the, the city planning. And, but where is the population? I ask, where, where is the population? Do you have heard what, what the people's needs, what they want with this, what they're expecting with this project? Or, or if this is only uh, your own point of views? Because I believe they are interesting, your own point of views, but we are like 10 people in this room and the city outside, they have like a thousand, uh, a thousand inhabitants. So, do you have heard all of them? So this is quite in, in really important in all the projects in the sustainable planning. The, the public participation and here the population is by vital if you want to prosper and if you, you want to succeed in your project. And we have also another one that is uh, in, uh, in Europe. We are starting to create this kind of uh, uh, project that is called Euro Cities. We have a lot in, in Portugal and Spain. Perhaps in another opportunity, I, I can talk only about this kind of second generation uh, project of collaboration that is entitled uh, the Euro Cities. But we are creating this kind of uh, the Euro City that is the principle is based on two cities from different countries. They share uh, uh, the, same, the, the same infrastructures. They can have almost, is the, almost the, the same the same government between the two cities, even they have their own, own governments, for example, the Spanish side and the Portuguese side, but they try to, to, uh, to, to manage all, the, all the, 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 the both cities, all the area together. The principle is very beautiful and everything, but sometimes not work so well with uh, my own experience because being in the Portuguese border, uh, the Portuguese Spanish borderland. But the idea is quite interesting. We have really good. Uh, case studies that have been, been a success, for example, in Chaves, Verín, and Tui Valença, and in the, the middle border, uh, like in Elvis, Portuguese side of Badajoz, uh, it not happened so well. So in the south, the Iberian cities, uh, Euro cities from the Iberian Peninsula, it not happens with so, with so successful. But the point is, let's see, the point here is not only to focus on the Euro city principle, but also on the marketing and advertisement made about the project. Let's say I focus on Elvis Badajoz. Elvis is a Portuguese city, and Elvis Badajoz, and also with Campo Maior, that is a smaller city on Portugal. The three of them are are a um, Euro city. Okay, if you go to the internet, say you look from Elvis Badajoz, Campo Maior, Euro city, and it appears. The point is, Badajoz is like uh, twenty times bigger than Elvis, and uh, consequently, Badajoz is like a uh, hundred times bigger than Campo Maior. The Spanish city is a really uh, big city for, the, for that region. And the point is, uh, in the side of when they are starting to create these protocols about the Euro city in 2013, 2011, or something like this, uh, they made a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, advertisement and marketing from the Portuguese side, or in the double city in Elvis, and also in Campo Maior, because they are really interesting for the smaller city. And if you ask for uh, any people, uh, any person in, uh, in Elvis, almost everyone knows that they are involved into a narrow city uh, project. But when you do the same in the Spanish side that we have conducted this, this, uh, this, uh, this survey, these questionnaires, like 90% or something do not know if they are in, in included or not in a narrow city. 
And that's why. That's because they are perhaps they are a much bigger city. Perhaps the government do not are so have so much interest that from the Portuguese side. But the point is, it shows a lot of things. It shows a lot a lot of lack of political commitment, and also show that they are not involved uh, in the public the public participation. They not involve the public, and also not do marketing and advertisement about this project. Okay, so uh, the marketing and advertisement also, uh, but. Uh, joined to the public participation, the political commitment is critical if you want to uh, achieve the success in this kind of, of, of project and processes. So I not wanted to take you more time. I give you some, some references about these studies we have been conducting, but you have much more. You just, just let me know if, if you need something more specific and perhaps you can follow me on the research gate on academia or Facebook or something you need from, from my side. And just this is only some examples from references. And I also want to use the opportunity. I'm not sure if you are, some of you are publishing or not, but, uh, or interested in publishing or not in, in the, these thematic fields. But uh, I'm also connected. I'm the editorial uh, of many, many uh, special issues in journals and also editor of thematic books. And so uh, I use the opportunity to, to can give you some, some opportunities if you are interested in this kind of issues, if you have works interesting for for this field i have some special issues i'm going on sustainability is a key to journal a really good journal uh, like i have one two and even more if you go to my profiles but i can if you talk to me perhaps you can get some some discount rates if the work is really interesting because all these journals nowadays the editorials ask for a lot of fees also have some uh, special issues in economies some uh, uh, i'm also the editor uh, assistant in current world environment also if you are interested perhaps you can contact me if you have some specific studies obviously we also have an infrastructures journal also in urban science and some call for books in the global but this one is almost uh, ending i have more but this one are only the ones connected with this this topic this particular uh, topic also please if you have more issues uh, from my side, please keep in touch from, as I told you, from ac academia, from ResearchGate, or even from Facebook, or even my, my email address, just put me an email, or on WhatsApp, and we are in touch. So from my side, once again, I hope that uh, my, my brief intervention was help you somehow in this kind of sustainable development processes, if you are working on it, with uh, with this uh, learning lesson that we have we have learned in the, the last few years from the European borderlands and you try to extrapolate to another territory as I told you so from my side thank you so much for for your attention and uh, muito obrigado e valeu galera so what you need from my side just let me know and you are in touch thank you so much <laughs>